You're listening to The Unpenned Show with Paul and Andy, broadcasting live around the world. We believe freedom is free. It is enslavement that you're paying for. If you ain't mad by now, you're not paying attention. We have, actually, um, a guest coming on about 10 minutes' time. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, well, um, I'll tell you a bit about him while we're getting ready for him, OK? OK, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's a pleasant surprise. A Very pleasant good. surprise. That's what we've got coming. So let's get ourselves sorted out then, because I do want to give him a little bit of time, so I'd like to have a chat to him. I can, I can hear you there well. You go, uh, Hello, mate. How are you doing? A very good evening to you, sir, and thank you for joining us. What a pleasure, actually. I mean, we've never spoken before. So you are live on air. We're recording as we speak. So um, uh, what can I do for you, then? Oh, well, I, I just wanted to jo- join in on the show. I was advertising on one of the, the Skype groups. I was asking for guests to come on and like to talk about anything. And uh, I, I just ro- wrongly volunteered, I suppose. <laughs> No, there's, you, you can't be wrong. You can never be wrong. I mean, we, we actually sit here on the Tuesday night and I uh, I say my piece, like many other people in Alternative Radio Land. I think Alternative Radio Land is a great place. I really enjoy uh, I enjoy being part of it, but obviously being part of it doesn't always give you a lot of time to listen to other shows. Tell us a bit about yourself, Vin. I'm, a little, I'm aware of very little of your history. Tell us a bit about you and where you are. Oh, right. I'm, well, I'm based in South East London near Greenwich, and um, where I'm coming from is I, a few years ago, I got into uh, Mark Stevens. I don't know if you, you've heard of him. I know the very gentleman. Okay, yeah. So, well, basically what I did was I, I started studying up on what he was showing people about, what he had revealed about the uh, the court system and government as such, and basically I, I sort of ran with it myself and uh, went about trying to convert his work over to the you know, the English court system, if you like. And uh, I've set a website up since. I'm doing a radio show myself on a Sunday now. That's on a Critical Mass Radio. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm aware of that station. I did spend a little bit of time there and then moved yeah. on to doing my own thing. Yeah, congratulations with that. Thank uh, you. Yeah, so uh, I, I, was, I was actually... I had, a, I had a radio show on Awake Radio for a while, but I've had to move, move um, hosts since then. But... Um, Yes, I mean, I, I set a website up, it's called the No State Projects UK dot co dot NR. Wait until you get the, the dot co dot UK bit sorted out. Okay, yeah. well, if you just, if, if you link that on my Skype and then I'll be able to stick it below the, the below the YouTube video when we do it for tomorrow, I'll be happy you're to mate, do, yeah. I'll be happy to do that. So, what you're telling me is that uh, you're fighting the legal eagle system. How, how um, I mean, I, I'm aware of it and I'm aware of the maritime history of it and I'm aware that uh, it's all based on water and ships and um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sea-based control system that now has been brought onto land. Would I be right there? Well, a lot of that is, in, in the way we look at it, is a lot of that's just legal opinion and political labelling. Um, we just generally attack it from, the, from the, the, the point of view of the facts. You know, what, what do the facts tell us when you're taking on, on the legal system? And the, the, the political side of it, we tend to stay away from. So whether you call it maritime, common law... Admiralty law, whatever you, you know, whatever you, whatever you choose to label it, we, we generally don't play that game with them. We, we just we, we we use the system against them in the sense of you know we'll we'll use their own rules and regulations against them and a lot of their case law as well. How they how they claim they're meant to uh, operate and um, go about you know delivering justice and go through you know due process and all that in court. And basically, what we do is we we use that against them to get them to contradict themselves. So <laughs> it doesn't matter to us what you label it, whether you label it common law, admiralty law, it's whether it's to do with ships or anything like that. I mean, I understand the history behind it, and a lot of it is probably based around that. But we just don't we, we don't go that we don't we, you know we don't use any of the free man methods as such or the trust law game anything like that. You know we, we don't make an issue of the name or you know, um, titles, legal titles, legal, yeah, we obviously play, we obviously um, understand the, the legal fictions and then we, we attack that from the factual perspective. Well, that's... Um... I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, just, just a, a borough or a county, everybody knows that, um, what well, everybody should know within this movement now, that a borough or a county is obviously a fiction, it's not real. But a lot of people don't necessarily know factually what it really is and what created it well all a borough or a county is is a statute it's a piece of paper so when they're claiming that you're physically present within a borough or a county what they're actually claiming is bon- 
madly wise is is that they're saying uh, you're physically present within a piece of paper within a statue. Yeah, I am aware of the uh, the dead fiction that we're attached to. I am, uh, you know, I do understand that uh, we have. Uh, we don't have a person. Well, we're not a person, but we have a person. I understand that, and I've done the word persona and personality and right down to person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do understand that they've had to dualise this system so big business can deal directly with us. Well, I mean, we, we, I'll say we don't, we don't care about that. You know, I understand, I understand from, a, from that perspective that, yeah, that's probably what they've done, but there's no real fact to back any of that up as actually being true. And even if it was, it's just a legal opinion still. Just because somebody turns okay. around and says, oh, your name, if it's put in all caps, becomes a legal name and a legal title and all that. If they want to believe that, I can believe whatever they want. But where are the facts to prove it? Where are the facts to prove that somebody, when you look at a man or look at a woman, a, a court or a judge decides, well, actually, I'm not really looking at uh, someone who's flesh and blood. I'm looking at um, you know, a corporation, some sort of fiction, or I'm only acting against the fiction. Okay. We've never seen any facts to actually back any of that up. Right, that's Although what, that's... I'm not saying it's completely it's completely nonsense, but well, we you... don't care. They can call us Mickey Mouse for all they like. <laughs> that's Bring a... the facts forward and prove you have a valid claim against us. Well, that's, and, how, that's... And that's how we challenge it. That sounds uh, that sounds a very common sense approach as to as, to, as trying to fight the, the fairy tale that they've sold us of how they've done it. Whereas you're just saying, yeah, whatever. Um, shows show you know shows the proof. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's basically what we do. I mean, when they want to um, bring a claim against you, if it's civil or criminal, they have to have what's called a valid cause of action against you. Now, according to their rules, a cause of action contains a minimum of three elements, and this is breach of a legal duty, violation of a legal right, and damage. So basically, what they claim is under our system, uh, under under the adversarial system we have in this country, mm -hmm. is that it's it's based on the fact that there has to always be a victim, regardless. So it's one thing bringing an accusation against somebody, then it's a point of actually proving there's a victim, there's actually an injury. Yeah, I'm with you so far, yeah. Yeah, and, and basically that this is what we challenge them on. You, you can accuse anyone, it's the same as if you get a parking ticket, a speeding ticket, anything like that. They still have to prove there's a victim, believe it or not. Even with a parking ticket, there has to be a victim. Right, so I'm, this I'm... is what we challenge them on. We say, well, go on and show that you've... Yeah, you know, present a valid cause of action. Show that you've actually presented a valid claim. Where's your victim? So, so this would go along the lines of if they claim you've if you've committed an offence, you're asking to bring who's been offended to, um, into court, yeah? Who, who is the victim? Yeah, and this is the thing: the way their system works is you have two types of victim. You have the public victim, i.e., you know, it's called a, or what's not commonly known as a public tort. Or even a even a crime, a criminal offence is a, a crime against all society. So apparently, it's a crime against everybody. But when it's civil, it can fall under tort or a contract. Now, a tort can fall into two categories: someone private, an individual, or the public still, which is called a public tort. And and that's it. So one is fictional, and one can be real. So what what are you pointing to? When it, see, whenever they talk about the public, well, ask factually what the public is, and the public is. An abstraction. It's a political construct. It doesn't exist other than other than in your own head or in their heads. Okay. And that's all the public is. We're not, when they talk about the public, they're not necessarily talking about people or people in the community as individuals. It's a political construct. It's not real. It's fictional. So if they want to say the victims are public, well, okay, then fair enough. Now show us the facts to prove it. Okay, so how, how is this how is this method of defence going then? Because you, you're speaking as if you've had a number of successes, and I suspect I suspect that might be the case. Am I right? Well, yeah. I mean, we're we're starting to build up some successes in this country now. We've just recently, just just beat a parking ticket using these methods. I know it's only petty a parking ticket, but the, the same principle applies nonetheless. I've been dealing with, with a speeding case over the last couple of years, and I'm about to get that dealt with in, in the High Court, and they're going to have to drop that case against me. Um, but in America, where Mark's um, done, done most of his work as such, you know, especially in the early days, he's had plenty of cases dropped against people. This is regarding tax issues, parking tickets, speeding tickets, that sort of thing. You see, I always, I always find this... this uh, a lot of people are concerned with this, uh, the, the, the legal movement, as I'll say, or, or the lawful movement, or whatever. I'm, I'm not trying to trip myself up, but I'm sure I'm going to manage it. Uh, a lot of people involved in this, we don't have to pay any bills if we don't want to movement. Uh, sometimes they, they claim that in, that includes, like, car insurance. 
and your gas bill and your electric bill and your water bill. And I'm, I'm pretty curious how on earth that can be true because it, it doesn't make any common sense. No, not really. You're right. And, and the thing is, on, on certain principles and certain certain issues regarding that thing, they're sort of talking a bit of sense, but sometimes they're talking a lot of nonsense as well. The, the problem is, is that, you know, when you're dealing with, with somebody who's actually providing you with a real service, but then you turn around saying, yeah, but they're, they're not really charging us for the electric or the gas, they're just charging us for the meters and this, that and the other. You've got to have something to back it up. You've got to have some facts to back a lot of this stuff up. And a lot of the, a lot, a lot of these issues that they bring up are just legal arguments. Now we stay away from that. We couldn't care less about legal arguments. It's all to do with the facts. And the thing is with the free man movement, with some people who have come, see, the thing is I've got nothing against the likes of Rob Menard and, and certain people who, who have, in the early days were trying to educate people in this stuff. I think, I think the problems come from people who have come since and misrepresented and misused what he was actually trying to show people to begin with. And the problem is with some people in this movement, they're coming across as, as freeloaders when, when they're acting like that, saying we haven't got to pay bills and, and things like that. I mean, I can understand the point of view where they're saying there is no real money. Well, yeah, we, we, we know that. That is a fact. There is no such thing as real money. It's just bits of paper as such. Just just saying a promise to pay. Yeah, I mean, I, The I problem thought... is you, you, can't, you can't really get yourself out of the system in, in, in that respect. We're stuck in it, like it or not, to, you know, to a certain degree. And you know, I'll say a lot, a lot of those sorts of arguments don't wash with me anymore. I mean, I first started off when I first got into this, like most people, I started learning about the free man movement. You know, I got introduced to all this by by Rob Menard. But um, you know, a lot of it doesn't wash now with, with a lot of what, what was being said. I'm not, I'm not saying that he, that he was necessarily wrong in everything he said. I think a lot of people who have come since and mis, misinterpreted and misrepresented what he was trying to show people, um, that's where a lot of this has gone wrong. Well, the thing is that the system is now, I mean, corruption is now endemic throughout the entire system. And you're picking on the, you know, the, the Crown, the, the courts, the, 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 very, the very system that should be, should be the bastion of justice. And of course, it's it's obvious now that uh, the criminal justice system is designed to protect the criminals. And maybe always it was, but the one thing that the internet has done, it's allowed us to um, perhaps uh, gain an education that we would not normally be able to get. And the internet is proving a very, very successful tool. And for those that want to learn and to be educated, it is allowing us to share that knowledge at the speed of light. And for me, that's the only positive that I can find with the internet. I use it for what I need it for, but I don't use it for fun or pleasure or enjoyment. And there's not much for me to learn on the internet that I can't get out of books faster, clearer and better. But the internet is our last chance, our last... It's our last strike at freedom. And if we don't take it and use it for the positives it can share, it can give the very few that are using it for positive reasons, uh, then we're going to give up, aren't we? Uh, uh, that's it, absolutely. I think it's, you know, it's, it's been it's been an absolute um, what's the word for it? You know, it's an, been an absolute revelation, what, or, or you know, revolution in that sense. You know, what the internet's been, been able to give us. I mean, we, we'd never be having this talk now if it wasn't for that. Do you, do you and, actually, I, and I wouldn't have the knowledge and, and do, do you, understanding that I have now if it weren't for the internet. But, but um, let, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question yeah. because this this revolution that we're all talking about, and the revolution is just. Revolution is a personal thing, you know, it, it's it's how you feel and have you completed the circuit and you're ready for another one. I don't think revolution is a, it, for me it's a personal thing, but let me go back to, um, was it 1999 and the very film that started um, this awakening for, well, for many people and that was The Matrix and The Matrix, yeah. the Matrix movie. It clearly, it clearly did uh, say very loudly to those that had eyes to see that you know, I'm not going to tell you how this ends. I'm going to tell you how it how it starts, and that's about the leaving pitch on the Matrix Number One movie, and along with 2001, the 9/11. You know, it 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 really you could almost say, has this been engineered? Is this our last chance? Have they given us the opportunity to 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 fight back? And if we don't fight back, then we've consented to what they've told us they're going to do, because this internet has allowed them to tell the entire planet exactly what they're doing. And for those that want to listen and hear and learn, 
it's there. And for those that don't, alternatives, it's a wash with alternatives. Are they not saying to us, guys, this is a global spy grid that we will make you do business on whether you like it or not. You can use it for good or bad because everything the devil offers you, you can use it for good or bad. Mm -hmm. We've been given our chance and this is almost the last chance saloon, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, sort of, I get what you're saying. I mean, the way I've always, always looked at this in a way is where we had to get to this point in history. Yeah, that's it would a, have been impossible, almost impossible for us never to have got here and be, and be at this this point in history doing what we're doing right now and having the technology that we've got. It was going to happen one way or the other. And it's the same with, with any ty with any tyranny. If you put anybody into a, a situation where they can they, they can become a tyrant over other people, they'll take it and they'll and, you know, and they'll use it for for, you know, for all the worst purposes. So, it, it, and that's human nature for you. That's what the Mill Graham and Stanford Prison Experiments taught us. Mm. You know, you put people in that environment, in that situation, that's exactly what they'll become. They'll become sadistic, and they'll become, you know, that you know, they'll, they'll become tyrants. You know, if you put if you put people in the right situation, I think you're absolutely. So I think it, you're absolutely right. You are. Surprise to me that we're at this point in history, at this time, doing exactly what we're doing now. It well, had to happen. It's going to happen at some point, and here we are. Is it? We just happen to be the generation that's alive at the time when it is. Well, so I, I, I get what you mean. They're sort of saying, you know, this this is your last chance, but this, we're, we're at the beginning of something. I think we're at the end of something. And the two things, uh, obviously, one door open. Well, one door closes, and another one opens if you choose to see it that way. I agree with you. Now, give us give us out your contact details again because we are coming to the end of our show. Uh, we've only got six minutes to run. I've got a few things that I need to do before we run out of that two hour slot that we have. But please give us your contact details, your website, and. Um, uh, we'll maybe talk after the show again so we can perhaps arrange a date in the future where we can perhaps really, really share what it is that you have to share uh, over a longer period of time. So give us those details. Sure, mate. Yeah, uh, well, my website is um, nostateprojectuk.co.nr uh, and you can get me on uh, Skype. It's uh, autonomous123. And um, that's it. That's, that's the best, best way you can contact that's me. And, uh, if you that's check my enough. website out, and Mark, it's linked to Mark's website as well, which is markstevens.net. Yep. And if, you, if more of you are interested in, in learning about his work and how he's gone about, um, you know, taking on the cults and challenging them, then they're the best places to go. Okay, then. Well, thanks for joining us this evening. I'm going to let you go and say I wish you well in your endeavour. Well done for actually getting out there, putting your head above the parapet, and being part of the fight because. It doesn't matter what we're doing, you know. If we're all doing something, then eventually, eventually, the, the noise will be deafening. People will hear us eventually. That's right, yeah, absolutely. Good luck with what you're doing. I'll speak to you soon. I'm going to finish off the end of the show. Thanks for joining us. That's fine, mate. Thank you. Thanks right. for uh, having me on. It's been an honour. Take care, right. my friend. Bye-bye. See you Bye -bye. Right, okay, what a good call that was. Mm. What a good call. Okay, five yep. minutes to eleven. One more tune to play. It is one of my favourite tunes. Uh, from an American uh, rock star, an 80s rock star. It's one of my favourite tunes. An interesting show again. Yes. I mean, if I, we ever well, tried we to... think so. It's called Unpenned. If we ever try to script this, yeah. we'd be wasting the time it took, wouldn't we? More comments on YouTube, please. Yeah, yeah. Be more critical, please. Let's, let's get involved. Yeah. Let's get involved. We're going to split this, um, we're going to split this show up into, I'm hoping we're going to split it up into about four different segments. Yep. And post them at different... I'm going to listen back to the show and see if it will split into four segments. Uh-huh. Uh, rather than posting the whole show, we'll post a segment and the whole show underneath. Yeah. If you want to if listen you want to, to it. listen to the whole thing, and then we'll post another segment with the same. You know, we'll, we'll try and do it in different segments, so we're not asking you to sit down for a good hour forty, an hour forty-five, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Okay, all links will be below the YouTube. Thanks for joining us this evening. It is a uh, good night from me, Paul Rippon, and good night from me. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>